Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, if you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to Butchka on Tour. Uh, today I'm coming to you live, large and loud from a hotel room in the Conrad Hilton in Singapore, which is pretty cool, uh, but it also means you're going to have to excuse the poor audio quality because we have a little bit of air con going on because it's hot, hot and wet. <laughs> And uh, it should be a little bit of fun anyway. And it also means that the room is very echoey. But this is a video on the E75TS. Now, I have not watched any of the other reviews from any of the other contributors on this tank. So I'm going in this one blindfolded based 100% purely on what I thought of the tank. And that's not rare because that's generally the way I do things, which results in a lovely difference of opinions and a wide tapestry of thought and love from all the different contributors in the World of Tanks Blitz universe. And my thoughts on this tank were that, bloody hell, I really like it. I really liked this vehicle. Um, and the reason I really liked it is contained in three numbers. One, two, zero. One, two, zero. Those numbers signify the side armor of the E75TS. That is 120 millimeters of side armor plus spaced armor on the sides. Those uh, little cow catches you can see on either side. The the bits that make it look aesthetically very pleasing to the uh, optic nerve. It's also got that lovely zimling, which is the... Um, armor that they have on a lot of the ww2 tanks the german tanks if you go and see the uh tank museum in bobbington which i've been lucky enough to be a guest of wargaming there on three occasions now it has this gorgeous armor on it uh with all these little ripples which is a big part of the authentic look of the tank so it looks great it's even got the poop pot on the back where you can sit on that if you need to legit uh, and it's got a lot of armor uh and it, it does one thing well uh, in fact, it does one thing exceptionally well, and that is side scrape. I found it to be just such an easy tank to drive because all I did with it was waltz up and side scrape. And for me, that was incredibly effective. Uh, it, it did all kinds of good things, uh, this thing in the close. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of that. I'm gonna show you some uh, footage of me side scraping against nearly underwhelming odds. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna show you some decent open field gameplay on it as well. But it is absolutely the same way I would drive an E75 is the way I drive this tank. Is it as strong as an E75? Hell no. It doesn't have the gun, the intimidating 460 Alpha that the 75 brings to the table. But the E75 doesn't drive against a lot of tier sevens as well. and. This tank versus tier 7s is really, really good. Versus tier 8 heavies, it is grand. I had no problems whatsoever. Now, I have heard a little bit of scuttlebutt around the traps comparing it unfavorably to the Lerva, and it's not a Lerva. It, it's not the kind of vehicle that you'd expect. Um, the Lerva is obviously a very, very different vehicle in that it has, well, for lack of a better word, it's got some incredible uh, gun handling. It's it's gun uh, 2208 DPM, which incidentally is slightly behind the 75 TS, uh, but it has 0.299 dispersion, which is incredibly good uh, for a heavy tank to go along with 234 millimeters of pen. Uh, the TS has 300, uh, 215 millimeters of pen and 0.317 dispersion, but it feels even further behind the Lerva in accuracy and i can't explain exactly why i just this is the general vibe i got from the tank after driving it for i think nearly 20 games and we had a fairly good win rate and i think just under 2k damage in it which isn't i mean these aren't incredible numbers but for me a tier 8 heavy the damage numbers shouldn't really be leaping off the page uh, if they are it's probably op because the tier 8 heavies are not renowned for being damage farming machines they will do damage but they're not really like your russian heavies your 120 millimeter derpy guns and this thing is built to be a stone wall it's built to get up close and actually hold a line side scrape a line and in that it is a very very traditional tank in in terms of gameplay uh, blitz and pc itself go way back to side scraping being the purest and most um, you know, honor bound mode of heavy tank gameplay. And that's not a normal thing. Um, a lot of open field gameplay and a lot of open field heavy tanks don't have 120 millimeters of side armor. Now you can see the side armor 
is angled severely. Um, and that creates both a very good open field angler and a very, very good, uh, if you can get any kind of rock to side scrape off, um, you can do amazing things. And we haven't even talked yet about the gun depression. The tank itself musters 10 degrees of gun depression. And during the course of my uh, travels, I didn't really push it as a gun depression tank. I wanted to really drive it as a traditional sidescoping vehicle, like the 75 that is its namesake. And as you can see, as my turret blows up there, we did enough though. We did enough there to uh, stay in the game and actually get us across the line. And that, uh, have a look at that, that young man. I think the uh, the other bloke there did six kills, which was good. This is a pretty standard side scraping situation. You can see I'm going to roll and rock on up here. Um, yeah, let's talk about the gun depression because the gun depression, one of the great things about this tank is that the gun depression actually allows you to use the turret. And the turret, boys and girls, is way stronger than you'd expect. Uh, the turret actually reminds me a little bit of a, you know, it's a weird one. It's like a 75 with a mouse's, uh, an E100's kind of flat face and wider cheeks. And it's just a weird tank all round. Although I'm not saying weird in a bad way. I think it looks spectacular. And it's so good in these tight spots. Like you can get incredible angles. I had over a thousand millimeters of armor at one point on armor inspector when I was angled up with the uh, spaced armor included into that. And that spaced armor just makes life a lot easier with um, heat. And a lot of people will fire heat at you because unlike the Tiger, like for instance, I'll give you the breakdown on this. The Lerva, which I've heard a few people compare the tank to, has 80 millimeters of side armor. The Tiger has 100 millimeters of side armor. This has 120 millimeters of side armor, which, I mean, luckiest Centurion ever, that went straight into the strats. Uh, and you can see I'm playing on hotel Wi-Fi here. So the Wi-Fi looks amazing. By the way, playing on hotel Wi-Fi earlier today, I had between zero and five ping. I was like, this is amazing. This, And then everyone woke up and the hotel Wi-Fi went to 20 ping with <laughs> periods of just tank floating around in the air. It was torture. It's like, this is the best ping I've ever had. This is the worst ping I've ever had. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times, which is exactly, you know, <laughs> you, you, careful what you wish for. I'm playing on low ping in Singapore. I probably shouldn't be playing on low ping in Singapore on this hotel. Uh, it'd be a lot better on a stable cable connection. But next time I come, we'll sort out one of those, uh, those you know, unlimited sims for the day. Where the hell was I? Yeah, so you've got 10 degrees of gun depression. You've got a flat face and you've got an awful lot of armor. I found it really hard to fault this tank at all. Uh, the one problem I had with it was it did have a reasonable top end. Hello, YOLO Tiger 1. Um, your lower glacis is crap. I make a mistake here. I should have angled in straight away. I'm trying to open field it like an E75 and that's my issue with it. Is Do you see how slow it is? How cumbersome it is? It is not an agile beastie. It is a tank that really struggles to get out and about, and it can be tough for this tank to traverse to fast-moving mediums, uh, which is as it should be. Anything with this much armor should not be able to turn quickly. It also doesn't have the kind of gun that intimidates. Uh, it would be much, much too strong if it had the E75's uh, 128mm. Uh, there's no way around that. I wait for this stubborn emerald you can see here to back up, switch to HE, uncalled for but we finish him anyway that's the gun's good enough for things like that it's better than a standard heavy tank gun but if it if it had i love how the turret is wide at the rear and narrow at the front i mean that is just such an un-german thing um and that kind of makes me feel like it's a little bit of a frankenstein which i really enjoyed uh that ts part of it here we go just the angle you can hold here is really strong even against tds you know, I'm trying to bait shots out of that WRZ 121FT and he just doesn't want to bar of it. There's nothing there for him. Although he does seem to have perfectly uh, acceptable amounts of armor. The BL-10, no, doesn't have quite so many issues. You can see the 152 down there. I try to overangle to get a, a shot on him. And this is the crazy part. You should, I mean, I'm just really road testing this. You should never overangle to a TD. Um, even if you're side scraping in any kind of tank, 
Uh, if it's a 150 millimeter and up gun, they are going to be able to HE you for big numbers or pen your sides because they have the most pen in the game. And the VL-10 there was absolutely a case in point. And you're going to see how long it takes me to turn around and start getting into this 26E4 as he charges. But I've done my job. I've side scraped up there. I've been aggressive. Uh, I've been the heavy tank. I've got a great looking legendary armor. I mean, it is what it is. I don't think it's a broken tank at all. I think it fits well within the meta of tier 8. And it's a nice tank to have as a dose towards your 120mm Russians. Which I think the meta with the 120s is, it's starting to fade. It's really turned around. You've got your... Uh, the American EXPs and all these kind of tanks and the tier eight heavy tank driving is getting a little bit different again, which I have personally enjoyed no end. I hope you liked that review, uh, a bit fast and furious, but that's fair enough. We are in Singapore doing the Singapore sling. I hope you enjoy the videos. I've certainly plenty more coming down the pike. I've got three videos ready to drop when I get home. I uploaded them to the PUBG mobile channel before I left for Singapore because I was in a rush and, um, I put them on the wrong channel and I couldn't get them around. So, you know, look forward to that. Until next time, I'm Bushka. Stay safe in the battlefield. Look after yourself and bye for now.